Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, with your shows, desolation, or spices, vassals, minions. I'm a useful idiot, welcome. And uh, today I want to go to France. I'm a little late on this, but I'm going to be doing a little catch up because I've been gone for a couple months. So I'll be doing a couple, uh, some catch up videos on, on some stories that may be a little older, but I'll try and give my own uh, individual treatment. And uh, this whole uh, Charlie Hebdo in, uh, incident. Um, is a is one and uh, it's a very complex situation because of uh, multiple layers as always uh, all we have to do is see uh, footage that doesn't look real and already uh, the narrative starts to unravel but uh, before I get into kind of all that let's first of all say first first of all let's just say uh, I consider it more of a criminal act uh, the fact that these are uh, blown uh, out of proportion into this uh, uh, international terrorist event uh, that ne necessitates uh, France to put some uh, 10,000 uh, uh, security people in the streets. I I'm not even sure if the number is 10,000 or is it 50,000? I know there's massive military and police presence uh, for what essentially is, is a criminal act, but somehow labor uh, labeling it terrorism uh, uh, expands it into this uh, mythical event, and uh, and uh, and so now we have this uh, euphoria uh, in France, much like what we saw in the United States after 9/11. Uh, but the certainly the events hardly compare, uh, but the results are the same, and that's where where we get the heart of uh, what this event is, uh, whether it's a manipulated event or not. Uh, the fact is the state is taking advantage of it, and France is no exception. Uh, any country will take advantage of these, these crises, uh, and that includes the United States in, in multiple locations, as well as uh, Russia and Crimea. Uh, these geopolitical events open themselves uh, to these sort of uh, 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 facts, factors. So, uh, so we have uh, this, uh, this event being... Uh, manipulated and used to facilitate the same uh, agenda that we saw happen in the United States and has happened in multiple countries uh, throughout the world and throughout history for that matter and and now we're going to have the, the uh, we, we already know the surveillance state exists there we now we're going to have the the police state we're going to have the the, the terrorist anti-terrorist state uh, more civil liberties civil liberties will be uh, suspended and that's part of the background of this story as well with France uh, just like all the other nations involved in this March of Unity they're all a bunch of hypocrites of course because uh, none of them are very interested in free speech with Obama's record with uh, whistleblowers and trying to uh, uh, adapt new uh, censorship measures uh, in all sorts of medium um, we have Israel Netanyahu there uh, doing a little uh, what do you call it? He's looking for Israelis, uh, suggesting they should all move back to Israel. So that's an interesting. There he is campaigning in France and telling all the Jews there that they need to to move to Israel. But Israel has arrested cartoonists. And France has recently arrested a um, comedian for making off-color remarks. So we have a CNN journalist uh, who's uh, looks like he was forced out uh, after 34 years for a tw Twitter rant about Israel. Um, certainly, there's not a lot of free speech uh, about Israel, uh, and uh, well, actually, people get away with quite a bit, don't they? But uh, there's plenty of examples of uh, free speech being curtailed by all these so-called leaders that lined up for this photo op. That was another interesting thing: is finding out that uh, these all these leaders and their entourage were nowhere near any any crowds uh, in Paris. They were. Uh, isolated in their own little uh, photo op zone and uh, photographed uh, but nonetheless uh, this uh, this reaction in Europe is also rather uh, startling because let's remember in Europe but particularly in France uh, they take these issues seriously um, if there's labor issues there's going to be people in the streets so uh, so it's uh, it is very dangerous for these forces to be unleashed and certainly one of the forces we see Unleashed is this whole 
thing about terrorism and, uh, and Muslims. And uh, one of the things that uh, I find interesting is that uh, uh, I have an article that I'll attach, and um, I don't know the exact veracity of these uh, figures, but I, I, I would assume they're true. I haven't cross-checked as I normally would like to do. But the percentage of, of terrorist attacks, the number one uh, terrorist uh, groups in, in Europe are separatists, not Muslims. And these are all separatists and involved with uh, uh, Corsican uh, separ separation and um, undoubtedly Catalan and a number of other regions in, in Europe. And uh, so these, uh, in 2013, out of 152 terror attacks in Europe, so 152 terror attacks in Europe, only two were religious motivated. So um, most of these terrorist attacks in Europe, but they don't get the headlines. That's 152 attacks all across Europe too, so you'd think that would get more headlines. But unfortunately it's when uh, uh, Muslims do it, uh, and now it becomes this threat that uh, Muslims are going to just start attacking people all over the world. and just. Western media saying that Muslims are going to start attacking people all over the world will probably make Muslims start attacking people all over the world. But uh, how, how many were committed by Muslims over the last five years in Europe? That's still, that figure is still under 2%. And, and in fact, one of the more notable uh, terrorist attacks in Europe in 2011 was the Norway. And that was actually a Christian terrorist. But they don't like to talk about a Christian terrorist. Um, and you know, I know it's a it's a different point because we don't have a a organized uh, Christian jihad as we do with Muslims, so it's not really fair to compare. But uh, uh, according to the U.S. State Department, 2013, there was even 400 acts of terror by Israeli settlers, um, but we don't really hear about Jewish terrorism uh, too much either. But once again, I, you know, it's not necessarily fair to uh, correlate the two. Uh, just trying to make uh, some interesting points, and um, so then we have uh, so we have this uh, one video that looks fake of the policeman being supposedly being shot in the head on the ground. Uh, so that brings up some interesting questions, as does the uh, uh, apparent suicide of the police commissioner, and then this uh, massive uh, overreaction. So it does bring to mind. Uh, conspiracy ideas, which include uh, uh, the, a new uh, series of Gladio uh, projects going on in, in Europe. And for those who are not familiar with Gladio, um, it was plans and, and, and for uh, terror attacks to uh, uh, happen across Europe, sacrificing European lives in order to blame it on whatever terrorist group uh, needed to be blamed at that time. And uh, they're certainly encourage those to, to look it up on uh, uh, YouTube to find out more about it. But uh, the idea is that this, this could be new terror attacks um, uh, carried out and, and, and as a hoax, uh, more or less to perpetrate an agenda. And, and it could be a, a, both a mix of fact and fiction, which makes it all the more uh, difficult for uh, anyone to follow this trail. And, uh, and now we even have five Russians being arrested for a terror attack. So talk about joining the, the U.S. empire now, uh, France uh, throwing in with uh, the U.S. Um, and finding five Russians. So that'll play well in this new uh, Cold War we have, or whatever people want to call it. And I think that's part of the big picture here is we have uh, all these uh, leaders certainly take advantage of this uh, situation for their own agendas, and that's why everybody shows up in, in Europe to do that so I'm all the more glad there was no uh, U.S. representative. Uh, it, was a, it was a debacle um, to see Europe's far right and uh, Netanyahu uh, from Israel on common ground. And uh, but the big picture here for me is uh, uh, France uh, joining the empire. Uh, certainly, uh, since the uh, present government has been in power in France, uh, we've had these uh, excursions in Africa, uh, these post-colonial excursions uh, with France and its previous empire. Uh, we have them joining the war on terror and sending more forces to the Middle East to join against ISIS. Uh, they have their own security state. They're uh, uh, joining in this uh, new economic war against Russia. Uh, so they've thrown in with the United States and uh, 
It's a, probably going to be good for the economy in some ways. It will certainly build national pride for uh, a government that's struggling uh, with massive economic problems with the uh, uh, country that essentially is a, a somewhat of a depression uh, with a massive unemployment rate and an unsustainable uh, welfare state and a, a, a declining economy. So, uh, so anyway, uh, there's my take. Uh, probably not adding much new to this than, than you're going to get anywhere else, but there, there, uh, there it is. A useful idiot uh, chimes in on uh, Charlie, Charlie in uh, Europe, and let's. Uh, look at the uh, the um, situation uh, too. Uh, I, I want to mention this as well that the the whole incident needs to look be looked at in the light of the fact that there is French racism, there is a marginalization of uh, Muslims and other immigrants uh, in France um, to the point where I understand that most of them are, are segregated in uh, outlying areas around cities and uh, uh, certainly afforded a certain amount of abuse and uh, now we have uh, this uh, uh, racial tradition, uh, this racist tradition in Europe being uh, fostered by those in power uh, so I see that but we have to uh, remember that, uh, that what, uh, what sort of environment we're talking about here the other part of that environment is the, this magazine itself, Charlie Hebdo. It's a, a satirical, satirical magazine, but uh, the more I've uh, read about it, the more it seems like a fairly uh, base satirical magazine that's full of uh, very obvious racism and, and, and is very shocking, uh, including cartoons of Jesus masturbating and, uh, and uh, Muhammad uh, uh, shitting out stars and uh, all sorts of uh, provocative things. And, um, Certainly anybody that prints that kind of material um, should probably have its own protection and can probably be a subject to attacks from any number of uh, uh, people it criticizes, I would assume. So it's probably their responsibility. But uh, as Rahm Emanuel says, uh, 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 never fail to take advantage of a good crisis. And we see a lot of that going on here, uh, regardless of uh, what the actual events on the ground were. Um, that said, um, if everything uh, is as it says it was, it was a, certainly a, a horrific uh, incident uh, and uh, uh, I don't want to take anything away from that, but uh, unfortunately we live in a, in a world that's not uh, black and white anymore. Uh, everything's gray. I'm a useful idiot, don't you be one too.